Hey, welcome to Kingdom Chats. I'm Caleb. And I'm Kara. And together we have the great joy of being the Young Families Pastors here at Wine Press Church, leading the amazing community, which is Kingdom Families, and hosting this podcast, where together we are exploring practical ways to live out His kingdom in our everyday lives. That's it. And each episode is designed as a conversation starter. Yeah. So we're going to unpack the word together hopefully to spark conversations in your world because that's where the real value is when you can actually explore it with your spouse, your kids and your community group. That's exactly right. So every week along with the episode, we release discussion questions specifically designed to discuss with your spouse, your kids and your community group. You can find them every week at winepress.org.au forward slash kingdom chats. That's winepress.org.au forward slash kingdom chats. So bookmark it, put it on your home screen, Print it on your wall, do whatever you got to do. Go there every week uh, to explore those questions together. And together, let's see his kingdom come on earth as in heaven. Let's dive in. Hey, Kyra. Hey, Caleb. Welcome back to another Kingdom Chat where we are talking about bringing his kingdom, seeing it on earth as it is in heaven. Mm. Uh, Last week, we were talking about partnering with Jesus in praying Mm. for the for the harvest field. We've yeah. been looking at Matthew 9, where Jesus said that the, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Mm. So pray, therefore, to the Lord of the harvest to send workers into the harvest field. And we we encouraged you in that last week to to pray for that, but to, to pray heartfelt mm. <laughs> prayers, to let that get in your heart. We talked about how that word pray mm. really means to beseech, to actually be bound to yeah. something. It'd be like, God, we, we need to see this happen. Mm. And... When we finish that, I just had on my heart to do one more week on mm. prayer. Like we said, prayer is something that God's put his finger on at Wine yeah. Press lately. Um, and we believe is so important for actually doing the work and yeah. seeing people brought into his kingdom. That's exactly right. Yeah, we started to talk at the end last week about how prayer is like the engine room mm. where like all the, the, the real stuff happens. happens. Prayer is where we see things change in the spiritual realm mm. that then – here in this visible natural realm we then walk into the the mm. results of that but the results are what we're going to walk into the success that we'll have when i say success i mean in building the kingdom yeah. that is going to be the result of prayer prayer winning the battles in the spirit in mm. prayer first so yeah. i just feel like it's really significant for us as kingdom families in this season mm. where we're a god god has put on our hearts to take the kingdom outwards Mm. into our community and to reach people, we need to just take some quality time Mm. to pray. Yeah. Because, you know, in this in this region, in this harvest field, it's not a neutral environment. Mm. It we are working against um, like it says, the principalities, the powers mm. of darkness, the the spiritual forces that are against Mm. they are they are power they they're actively working against us, uh, against the kingdom. So we're going to pray. We need to actively be defended. Exactly. Pray and see yeah. see God work and see God do things. And then we're going to walk into the, yeah. the fulfillment of that. So what I thought we'd do this week, last mm-hmm. week we just talked about that concept of praying and we encouraged you to be praying in your community group. So it's been yeah. awesome to see that happening. Yeah. Um, but I just sort of felt we're just going to go through just quickly a few scriptures that specifically give us foundations of things that we can be praying yeah. In praying for the, Tools, yeah. the harvest Tools field. Tool, yeah, exactly. Tools that we can have to use to pray into this, to, yeah. to pray specifically for the lost, for the harvest field, for the community mm. where God's planted us. Okay. So um, why don't you start with one, Kai? Yeah, so the first one that comes to mind is the Lord's Prayer, which we're probably all very familiar with. But Matthew 6 um Verses 9 says, uh, Pray then like this. This is Jesus. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts, as we have also forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And I love this because it's Jesus. I mean, Jesus is telling us this is how we should pray. Mm. You know, our God who is in heaven recognizing he is above he is the authority like we talked about um or you know as we see in matthew 9 that you know he is the he's the lord, lord of the harvest. harvest he's the one above it all so it's you know it's his heart it's his call it's his vision that we're fulfilling so seek him first and it says your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven so again it's that that sense of praying in the spirit for his kingdom to come 
and be like heaven on earth. Mm. So we're actually calling in something of God to our reality. Yeah, um, that's so good. So it's very significant. That's a huge concept. Jesus told us to pray this way, yeah. that we would see his kingdom manifest in this life, in this yeah. world, like it is in heaven. Yeah. That we would see this. Imagine that. We can pray. We want to see this city become a place of heaven on earth. Yeah. Become a place of springs in the desert. That's right. So it's very significant. And then he gives us things that, you know, give us this day our daily bread, you know, obviously about, you know, him providing for us and our needs mm. being met. Um, forgive us our debts as we have forgiven our debtors. Such a significant thing. You know, we're not sort of diving into the depth of that right now, but forgiveness and making sure our hearts are pure before God. And, you know, there's so much that comes when, you know, so much gets in the way of God's work when we're holding on to unforgiveness and bitterness mm. um, that stuff just eats away at us and allows the enemy to do his work rather than allowing god's work to be done so yeah. that's it's really important stuff. so lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil um and so yeah that's about keeping our hearts pure yeah. as god does his work but that, that first bit your kingdom come your will be done it's very significant and um something that you know this year i've taken to praying every day um you know, I've stuck it up in our bathroom so I can see it and be reminded every day that's like, I'm going to pray this for, you know, myself and declare, hey, God, I want to see your kingdom come and I want to see heaven invade earth. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Let that be a, I think that's good to start with. That's a foundation point because yeah. in, in crying out for this city, for the harvest mm-hmm. field, we're saying we want it to be his kingdom yeah. in this place yeah. as on heaven. We, we want to see his kingdom come. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's good. Um, can I dive into a couple that have been really significant for me mm-hmm. in my prayer life, um, and particularly in this space of praying for the lost, for the unsaved, mm-hmm. for the city? Uh, one of them is, is in Acts 4. So the story behind this is that obviously the start of the book of Acts, so mm-hmm. the apostles have started going out and taking the kingdom. Um, Peter goes and sees awesome healing happen. He sees a lame beggar healed. But then he and John are brought before the council and they're told, you've got to stop preaching mm. the gospel, stop preaching Jesus, stop stop bringing the kingdom, basically. Get mm. back in line, you know, stop standing out. And so immediately Peter and John go back to their community of mm. believers. So they come back in their community. And this is from verse 23 um i'll skip through parts of it just for the sake of time but it says as soon as they were released they went mm. to their friends i love that it actually yeah. says their friends it doesn't just say to their church they, f- they went to their people mm. that's your your community your community group yeah. and they reported what they'd been told which was basically stop preaching jesus or you'll die mm. as soon as they heard it they lift up lifted their voices together to god and said so straight away they say all right we're gonna pray mm. and here's what they do the first like then chunk of their prayer, the first four verses, they're just lifting up and praising God mm. as the one who's above all this, the one over it. I'll read it quickly. It says, they said, Sovereign Lord, you made heaven and the earth and the sea and everything in them through who the mouth of our father David, your servant, said by the Holy Spirit, why did the nations rage? Why did the people's plot in vain? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and his anointed. For truly in this city there were gathered against you a holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed both Herod and Pilate, along with the Gentiles and the people of Israel to do whatever your hand and your plan had predestined to take place. Mm. They're basically saying, God, everything that's against us, you're above it all. Yeah. <laughs> you're, they're, they're even talking of David um, in the Psalms where he he prophesied this and um, where he said, everyone's raging, everyone's against you, but you're the Lord. You're mm. seated above it all. And then they say, they cry out, now, Lord, look upon their threats and grant to your servants to continue to speak your word with all boldness. Mm. while you stretch out your hand to heal and signs and wonders are performed through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. Uh, And when they had prayed, the place in which they were gathered together was shaken. Mm. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and continued to speak the word of God with boldness. Mm. So they came and they specifically prayed. They said, God, grant us boldness Mm. to preach your word. I'm grateful we are not yet in a place where we're getting serious threats to stop bringing the kingdom into the city. But... It might come, yeah. <laughs> and regardless, boldness. and regardless or not, yeah. you know, we need boldness yeah. because that's such a significant thing. Yeah. They started this prayer by just lifting up Jesus as Lord. They lifted yeah. up and said, "You are above all this. You're the Lord above all." Yeah. And so they they set their eyes on Him and said, "Now 
We pray for boldness. Mm. Give us boldness to preach. Um, but then they also prayed for him to then back that up with signs and wonders. Yeah. And see that happen. And the result, they went and continued to speak the word with boldness. Yeah, they were unmoved. Good. That is, a, I think, mm. such a great way for us to pray for our harvest field, yeah. to lift him up as Lord, and to pray for boldness mm. and signs and wonders. Yeah. We're going to talk about more signs and wonders in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, that's, that's, I think, a great template for a mm. way that we can pray. That's good. Did you have any more that you want to share? Um, no, I was just going to re- – like we talked last week, obviously, from Matthew 9. And so, you know, as we're praying, the two significant things that came out of that was, A, the compassion. Yes. So when Jesus looked out, he had compassion, prayed from a place – of compassion, so mm. praying for God to give us a heart of compassion for people and to be seeing people as He sees them, um, and then praying for the labourers. So earnestly yeah. praying, making that. So we that, talked about last week. Yeah, that real commitment to say, "I'm in this, and this is my passion to see uh, labourers working in the fields." So I'm going to pray. Yeah, that's really good. For it. So good. Can I quickly give us one last one yeah. before we close out? Um, and this is from Luke 18. Uh, from verse 1 to 8, it's the parable of the persistent widow. Mm. It's a parable Jesus spoke about prayer. It says, He told them a parable to the effect they should always pray and not lose heart. Mm. I just wanted to close with this because I feel like this is a really significant one mm. for us to to not lose heart when we're praying for something and it doesn't feel like we're seeing anything change. Yes. He said, In a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God or respected man, and there was a widow in that city who kept coming to him and saying, Give me justice against my adversary. For a while he refused, Mm -hmm. but afterward he said to himself, Though I neither fear God nor nor respect man, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, Mm -hmm. I will give her justice so that she will not beat me down by her continual coming. Coming. Uh, literally, it says, so she will not beat me down. Literally, it means so she will not blacken my eye. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, she's going to hurt me. Yeah. <laughs> she is so passionate, passionate and determined. Yeah. Um, and the Lord said, hear what the unrighteous judge said. Will not God give judge justice to his elect who cry to him day and night? I tell you, he will give justice to them speedily. Mm. Um, I want to quickly point out the point of this parable is not to give a, a reflection of what God is like. God yeah. is not like the unjust judge crossing his arms saying, no, I don't want to answer your prayer. But it's saying sometimes when we're praying, it will feel like it does for that persistent widow, mm-hmm. like you're banging down the door of heaven. And you know, sometimes it's like the heavens feel like brass. You know, mm-hmm. it's like, God, I'm praying for these people, especially when we're praying for the lost. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, I'm praying for them, I'm praying for them, I'm praying for them, I'm praying for them. And they they just, still make silly decisions and they still do the wrong thing and they still they still don't live your way. Exactly. Yeah. And they still go the other way. Um this gives us hope. Jesus specifically gave them this parable because he said, always pray and yeah. don't lose heart. Yeah. I want to encourage us in that. Do not give up. Let's mm. pray like the persistent widow with that passionate, vigorous persistence. Mm. Say, God, we are going to beat down heaven's door for this city. Yeah. We're going to pray for this city. We're going to pray for this community. Mm. We're going to pray for this harvest field. And we're going to blacken your eye we're not actually going to blacken god's eye but you know that no (laughs) that 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 is that that is what is in that parable we are going to keep coming and keep coming and keep coming and keep coming yeah until we see it change yeah let's do that yeah awesome awesome be blessed yeah have a great time uh, praying together and let's see his kingdom come on earth is in heaven (laughs) 